In last week's Nervous event, we learned how interoperability can shape the future of blockchain evolution. So I think as we grow as an industry and then as we serve more and more people, uh, we're going to start to stretch the limits of the boundaries of you know, existing platforms. Nervous is an open source public blockchain ecosystem dedicated to solving one of the biggest challenges currently facing blockchain technology. Today, the co-founder at Nervous, Kevin Wang, is here to present their groundbreaking interoperability technology, the Universal Passport. Thank you, Giovanni. Uh, I'm happy to explain a little bit more about Universal Passport, which is Nervous Network's interoperability solution. Let's first look into the concept of interoperability. We believe that the future of the decentralized economy is going to be built on multiple blockchains, including both highly specialized blockchains, such as Bitcoin uh, to store value and reserve currency, and uh, other specialized blockchains for uh, specific applications, as well as general platforms like Ethereum and Nervos. And this will e even include open permissioned or uh, even private blockchains. All blockchains will come together and form an internet-like public network. Uh, therefore, we need every blockchain to be able to interop with one another. For example, we want to move assets from one blockchain to another one. We want to be able to swap assets between blockchains or have uh, applications that will call smart contracts on multiple blockchains. So interoperability as a, as a research topic, it has been around for a few years but it mostly has focused on cross-chain, right? Which is uh, more about just moving assets across different blockchains. It takes a very chain-focused point of view and then uh, talk about the specific protocols, uh, how you would ensure security between uh, typically assets moving between different blockchains. When we look at some of the most well-known um, interoperability solutions. Polkadot and Cosmos, for example, are both cross-chain projects that could connect all blockchains that are compatible with their own standards. Um, but who will win in the end? Uh, we don't know, right? And they both have grand visions, and then uh, they both promise that as long as new blockchains are built with their own frameworks or toolkit, then they can be connected to their own uh, universe of blockchains. However, what we are seeing is that blockchains are connecting uh, together directly. For example, uh, we're seeing Bitcoin is uh, bridged to Ethereum directly uh, without going through, for example, either Cosmos or Polkadot. And the same idea that Zcash and Ethereum will be connecting together. So I think we will start to see more and more of these ad hoc uh, connections between pure blockchains instead of a, a new protocol that will eventually uh, be adopted by all the blockchains uh, as the hub or uh, the relay for uh, all blockchains to connect. Other than the standards problem, right? Um, we, we Today we do have many standards that are incompatible. Another problem that we're seeing today is this user experience problem. And just imagine a user when they use um, an application that access multiple blockchains. They need to have wallets that can talk to these multiple blockchains. For example, if you're an Ethereum user and then you want to, um, you want to, you have a MetaMask wallet set up, but if the application need, also need to use uh, Bitcoin, then you also need to install the Bitcoin wallet, which means you have to create an account, you have to remember, write down the seed phrases, um, and then you obviously have to download the wallet and know the interface, how to operate it, and so on. And just imagine now you have more than just two blockchains connecting together. For the end user, the hurdle to uh, be able to work through these interfaces um, will be very, very difficult. Creating new standards trying to unite existing standard never worked work out too well in the past. Uh, instead, we need to think about how to be compatible and support uh, existing standards. This is the promise of uh, interoperability 2.0, and this is the result of 
uh, of us at Nervos, trying to think about solutions from a princ first principled approach. Uh, we try to think about, you know, when's the perfect solution will be built, um, what we want to accomplish, right, in the ideal situation. And this is what we come up with, right? So we want to be able to uh, have users operate on any assets from anywhere. And, and this actually solves both of the problems that we highlighted. The first one is this incompatible standards problem, right? So we don't want to create new standards. So there shouldn't be new standards, but instead we should be compat compatible with all the existing standards. And similarly, we shouldn't uh, ask users to have multiple interfaces and multiple identities. Uh, instead, we want to we want the user to use any interface and then have a united unified identity. In other words, we want to meet user where they are instead of asking them to um, to uh, get used to the interfaces that fit into the underlying uh, plumbing or infrastructure. So now let's look at Universal Passport. And this is specifically how we at Nervos um, implement this, uh, what we call interop interoperability, in to implement the interoperability 2.0. For the Universal Passport solution to work, there are uh, several layers of technologies that we put together. At the bottom is our public blockchain, which is Nervos CKB, and then CKB stands for Common Knowledge Base. And uh, the two features that enable this uh, universal passport on the public blockchain level are uh, fl flexible crypto primitives and also uh, abstract cell model. And we'll talk a little bit about you know, what they exactly mean and how they enable this. Uh, but on top of the, uh, the public blockchain infrastructure, um, we have a layer what we call interoperability 2.0 components, right? So these are uh, PW Core, uh, Forcebridge, and Polyjuice. And again, we'll get into these uh, one at a time later. And then on top of it, uh, developers can build applications that are naturally multi-chain, right? Or naturally cross-chain applications or multi-chain applications. So let's look at these components one at a time. Forcebridge. Uh, so Forcebridge is a general crossing protocol between Nervos and any other blockchains. The reason that this is um, this can be generic and then can connect to every blockchain is because when you think about the ability to uh, verify transactions across blockchains, you have to be able to um, essentially write in smart contract uh, the other blockchains uh, cryptographic proofs. You have to be, in, be able to interpret it and then be able to uh, verify those. And to do that, the blockchain itself needs to support whatever the crypto primitives that the other chains was, uh, are, are built with, right? So they can interpret transactions. So Nervos comes with uh, flexible, flexible uh, crypto primitives, which means um, developers don't have to wait for the core, you know, the builders of the infrastructure, the core devs. Uh, or hard forks to include pre-compiles for these primitives, but at any time uh, they can sort of roll up their sleeves and then include these libraries as they wish, as they will. Um, so with that, Nervos can uh, much more easily interpret, you know, the proofs from any other blockchains, and then be able to uh, uh, have cross-chain protocols uh, in a very decentralized manner. And the next component is PW Core, and this is built by a community team called Lay2. And this solution allows you to uh, build applications that's accessible to all users on other different blockchains. Um, you know, for example, uh, an application built on Nervos through PW Core, uh, you can reach users on, on Tron or EOS or Ethereum. All they have to do is just using their existing wallets and they'll be able to interact with the application. Finally, uh, there is Polyjuice, which is right now it's a Ethereum compatibility layer, but it, you know, it is really a general computation platform. Um, so right now, you know, we're making it EVM compatible. And uh, so 
what this solves is developers can uh, move their existing written smart contracts on Ethereum, and then seamlessly uh, through this uh, compatibility layer and run uh, run them on Nervos. So, you know, it preserves the investment they have already made uh, with their application, and also just you know if if they have already uh, done so on Ethereum, this is much faster to market. So let's look at the user stories, right? So from Ethereum users' point of view, they are currently today, they're using uh, ETH wallets such as MetaMask and Token to interact with Ethereum. And then uh, when we talk about Ethereum uh, ecosystem, it could be the ETH blockchain itself, uh, it could be layer two applications. Um, and now, uh, they can also, through the same interfaces, they can also work with Nervos, with the applications on Nervos. When they need to, uh, but when they need to work with other blockchains, however, uh, it can be so so easy because you see the connection between uh, their interface and other blockchain. Um, there's no direct connection between the two, so they have to uh, be operating on the ETH blockchain and then um, use another different access point to operate these other blockchains. So that's, you know, they have to go through this route and then uh, to look at other blockchain, uh, go through other blockchain wallets to operate other blockchains, and which is a big hurdle for them. Similarly, if you look at uh, from Bitcoin users point of view, right? So today they're operating Bitcoin with uh, their Bitcoin wallets such as Bitcoin, uh, Electrum, and then, uh, so for them, they're operating the Bitcoin blockchain. And then if they want to also be using Ethereum, then uh, they have this another access point, uh, uh, you know, MetaMask or M token to operate Ethereum. Now, for any other blockchains, again, they have to install other blockchain wallets. Now, what's special about Nervos is for, from Bitcoin users' point of view, they can be operating Nervos as part of their Bitcoin ecosystem, right? So they can uh, transfer BTCs from their Bitcoin wallets, but they can also operating applications on Nervos directly uh, with their Bitcoin wallets, right? So their universe of Bitcoin, uh, of Bitcoin includes both BTC blockchain as well as Nervos. Um, so that's, that's for the Bitcoin users' point of view. Uh, so now, What's more, what's even more interesting, is uh, it's the user journey for the internet users, right? And this is um, there are much more obviously internet users than Bitcoin or Ethereum users today. So for them, uh, using using Nervos as the backend for you know digital economy is it's really the same as the way they're operating their internet today, right? So they either through their mobile devices or through their browser, they can, um, uh, you know, they can access the internet and then through the same infrastructure, so through the same interfaces, uh, they can also operate in applications on Nervos, right? So for them, uh, Nervos just complements um, uh, their existing internet and brings this decentralized world to, uh, to internet. Whereas if they need to operate any other blockchain, they have to go and install a blockchain wallet and then, uh, you know, again, remember C phrases and, you know, acquire some tokens and um, uh, know how to send transactions to understand the concepts behind it. So let's, let's do a quick review, right? So for Bitcoin users, they come from uh, Bitcoin wallets. And then for Ethereum users, they come from the Ethereum wallets, right? And then these are the blockchain users um, that they already have their current uh, pre preferred uh, interface to access the, the, the blockchain world. And then Nervos network, uh, Nervos will fit uh, anywhere regardless how they choose to access, right? Either from uh, the point of view of Bitcoin or point of view of Ethereum or any other blockchains. So Nervos will be there and Nervos also connects with all these networks. 
but that's not really the whole story, right? So uh, there is this much larger base of internet users, and for them, well, we believe the natural onboarding to the blockchain world is through Nervos, because uh, Nervos is able to plug directly into their current uh, tools and then their current uh, and even future tools, right? So whether it's um, laptop computers um, with secret enclaves or mobile devices with cryptographic um, solutions like these secure uh, uh, you know chips that they can uh, preserve it, like it's almost like a hardware wallet uh, within a, a mobile device right so they can directly use their current uh, devices to access the decentralized world uh, through nervous so this is what we called uh, what we call the universal passport and then um, it, it doesn't matter where you come from and we're able to meet where you are and bring you all these assets from different networks uh, and present them uh, in front of users um, so to uh, you know it's for a solution for a fully decentralized world but provide a, a almost centralized like uh, user experience so uh, at the last point um, even nervous network is in the middle but uh, because of nervous networks uh, uh, crypto economics Right, so the more users that we, we serve and the more applications that we, we have, and uh, that will drive the demand for uh, Nervos uh, cryptocurrency, and um, which will make Nervos network more secure and then make it more attractive as this, uh, uh, this gateway or passport to the digital economy for, uh, for all different types of users. So that's, uh, that's the presentation. And then for Nervous Network, please come to our website. Um, you know, if you're a developer, you're very welcome to look at our GitHub. And uh, you know, we have included links for all these solutions. And then we will also have developer-focused events uh, in 2021. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.